ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا رب العالمين اللهم امين so i said brothers if you can come here in front because i have no people here so i need to move uh, and the more we are closer to one another the more barakah and blessings there is alhamdulillah so inshallah ta'ala we continue in the beautiful book that we started durus muhimma li ammat al umma explanation of it the beautiful book of sheikh ibn baz rahmatullah explanation of sheikh Abdurazaq al-Badr is important lessons for every Muslim, for lessons for every Muslim. And as we started, uh, the first lesson was to learn some of the surahs of Quran. We are in the tafsir of these surahs. And tonight we're going to talk about the, the tafsir of a few of the surahs. And each of uh, one of us is in need of understanding the meaning and then putting in practice of those surahs. And tonight's surah, the first one is Surah Al-Qari'ah. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Al-Qari'ah, Mal-Qari'ah, Wa ma adraka Mal-Qari'ah, Yawma yakunu nasu kal-farash al-mabthoo, وتكون الجبال كالعهن المنفوش فأما من ثقلت موازينه فهو في عيشة راضية وأما من خفت موازينه فأمه هاوية وما أدراك ما هي نار حامية الله سبحانه وتعالى says القارعة the striking ما القارعة what is the striking وما أدراك ما القارعة and what will make you know what the striking is it is a day whereon mankind will be like moths scattered about and the mountains will be like carded wool then as for him who is balanced of good deeds he will be heavy he will have a pleasant life but as for whom the one whose balance of good deeds will be light his refuge will be in hawiya jahannam hell and what will make you you make you know what it is hawiya it is a hot blazing fire Al-Qari'ah, it's, it's one of the names of the Day of the Judgment. We know that the Day of Judgment, Allah has mentioned a lot of names of that, so of that day in the Quran. Al-Qari'ah, Al-Tamma, that's mentioned, Tamma to Al-Kubra, Al-Sakha, many days, Yawm al So the names of the Day of the Judgment are numerous, a lot. In the Arabic language, the more names you have for an object or something, that means that that's important. So the Day of Judgment, we know that is very important. Allah uses a lot of names in, in the surahs to make, uh, to make sure that we understand that that day is so great, that day it's so huge that we need to work for that. And according to the description of that day, it's the, it takes the name because, for example, here it takes the name describing the tremendous activities and tremendous events and horrific events that will happen that day. Al Qari'ah, the striking, which means that that one, the day of the judgment, which will strike the hearts and the hearing from the severe terror and horror and tremendous circumstances of that day 
how huge the sun is going to come so close. Allah Azza wa will take people in account, a reckoning. That's that. That's a day, huge day, tremendous day. Events can happen. Allah is al qariya It's right. Another, that's the most uh, correct opinion or that of the most of the the Abbas of Allah and some of the Muftasirin. Some are says that Allah Azza wa Jal will strike the disbelievers and the kuffar with the punishment. Two, man qari'ah. What is the striking? Allah Azza wa asks this question, rhetoric question. Why? What make you know what is the striking? Allah Azza wa Jal asks this question to make us ponder and reflect more upon that day. To reflect upon the terror and the, clarify the greatness of that day. It is a great day. It is a tremendous day. You need to wake up. You need to think. You need to uh, be aware of that day. That's all. When you hear this, what made you know as Al-Qari? You are kind of, you, you are eager to know what is that day? What is that, that the description of that day? Yeah, I'm going to need that oh, test. Then after this, explains to us. Said. Nigga, what? The hour? That is the day that the mankind will be like moths scattered about. You saw, you see moths, you know why the moths, when they, you see how in that day Allah Azza gives a description like these moths that you see at your house or outside, how the people will be on top of one another, like waves mixing together like moths when they spread out or piling on top of each other. This is similar to the state of Allah, the saying of Allah Azza wa Allah says, they will come, the people come forth with humbled eyes on the graves. From their graves, as the, if they were locusts spread ab abroad. You know how the locusts, the grasshoppers, are spread ab abroad? The same thing. And why they give this description? SubhanAllah. Why Allah Azza wa gave the description of the people will be like moths. You see the moths? They try to find what? The source of light. They want to go, you see the light there in their house. And they don't know the way how they go. They just move around like that. It's like they are not guided. They don't know where to go. Even if you, you make a fire outside, what do they do? They have no aqal, no mind. They just go to, to the, the fire. And... They fall down in the fire. They fell down in the fire. That's what happens. Moths. SubhanAllah, this is a description how people will be terrified that day of the day of the judgment, piled on top of one another. It, it, the, 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 the matter is so serious, so they don't know where to go, where to then now it, Allah Azza is judging them. People are being like how we are we are to, together. They're not uh, we're naked, barefooted. We are uh, uncircumcised. And you were here, and now they are they're gonna be standing in front of Allah Azza, so they don't know the way, the same like the moths in that day, and they just fall on the hellfire may Allah Azza to protect us. The same thing Allah Azza mentioned, like the locusts or the grasshoppers, they are spread, you know, when they go and they produce. And some of the Arabic scholars, actually, the Arabic language, Kal <clears throat> Farah, one of the scholars, he mentioned that the moths. The word farash in Arabic doesn't mean only the moths that we know. Actually includes all the insects that fly. So it even includes what? Al-Jarad, the, the grasshoppers or a locust. So he said that, so in that meaning, the both these two ayat have the same meaning that they describe almost the same thing. This is the description of the people. وَتَكُونُ الْجِبَالُ كَالْعِهْنِ الْمَنْفُوشِ الْجِبَالِ Allah mentioned what? The mountains, these huge mountains that are solid, they are strong, they are firm mountains. Allah Azza wa has made mountains. Why Allah mentioned in the Quran has made mountains what? To keep this earth as pegs. It has made as pegs to not move. This earth. Can you imagine? Well, it's just, that's amazing. The, how the earth is. And subhan, how the water doesn't spill. You know how it's round, you say. And how Allah has made the, these mountains as pegs. Strong, solid mountains. High, huge. 
these mountains that we see that are so huge and so solid and firm on the day of the judgment Allah mentioned that will be like carded wool see the wool our mothers and grandmothers used to to make uh, like shirts and things with the, that wool take it the wool and make so the same thing the mountains will be like stacks of carded wool what does it mean that is is you can actually you cannot grasp it no, but they will not be graspable, these mountains. So they will vanish if a wind passes by. And other ayat, Allah has mentioned these mountains to deck. They're going to be tears, teared in pieces. Other ayat, these mountains are going to be nothing, vanish like the clouds to see it. They're going to be like moving like the clouds. Can you imagine you see how those clouds? The same way these mountains, subhanAllah, this is amazing, the matter of Allah Azza wa and the day of the judgment. Allah will change, will shift those, the, the, the way that we think. The day of the judgment, everything will change. These mountains at, at the, the end will be like sarab. What's sarab? Like a mirage. Disappear. It looks as uh, is that, but nothing. That is the, the day of the judgment. Then Allah Azza wa after these ayat, explains what's the ending what is the condition of the people in that day that they will be how many two categories the one who's him whose balance of the good deeds will be heavy this means the person whose scales are heavier with good deeds acts of obedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and various acts will draw them near closer to allah Al Muazin, the Mizan, which is the scales. The scholars say the Mizan here means the Mizan, the real scale. That the day of judgment are going to be put the scales. And what is going to be put in those scales? First, your good deeds. Second, the person himself is going to be put in those. Because the law of the Prophet said, the day of the judgment, it will be brought the person who is heavy. Big, huge man, and he, he does not weigh in the sight of Allah in the mizan, like a wing of a mosquito. Why? Because he has no uh, no good deeds. That is the, the deeds themselves, and the person plus the records, a deed itself, and the record of the deed. You know, the hadith of Bitaqa, the hadith of the card that Allah Azawajal brought the person. And he had a lot of records of bad deeds, but he had the only one. And that one, Allah Azza wa will overweigh other bad deeds because of that one, which was La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Obviously with work. That he had full iman. And Allah Azza wa will save that person, will make him enter Jannah. Hadith al -Bitaqa. And he had 99 records full of bad deeds, as long as he can see. SubhanAllah. So even, so what's going to be put on in, in the Mizan? The deeds, the records of the deeds, and the person himself. So that is the, the understanding of, of, of that, that if the person, his good deeds going to be heavy in the Mizan because he had more good deeds than bad deeds, then what is the result for these people? May Allah make us among them. He will live a pleasant life. Radiyah in Arabic, Mardiyah, meaning that the person is pleased with that. He will like, he will enjoy all the types of na'im, all the types of bliss. He will have it there in general. They will be in paradise for eternity, in the everlasting bliss which will never end. They will have what will please their eyes. This is from the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his blessings. As it had come in a hadith authentic from the Prophet when he said, Ida dakhala ahlul jannati al jannata kala yakulu allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala turiduna shay'an azidukum fayakuluna alam tubayyib wujuhana alam tudkhinna al jannata wa tunajjina min al nar kala fayakshifu al hijab fama u'tu shay'an ahabba ilayhim when the inhabitants of paradise have entered Jannah, paradise, Allah Azza wa Jalla, the blessed, the Baraka wa Ta'ala, and exalted, will ask, Do you wish me to give you something else? Anything more? 
They will say, have you not brightened our faces? You made, have you not made us enter paradise and saved us from hellfire? So what meaning, what do we want? Anything more? We see we're enjoying this bliss in paradise. Allah Azza then he will lift his veil from his face because nobody has seen Allah Azza And all of the things that they have seen and they are enjoying have given to them, nothing would be more dearer to them than the sight of their Lord, the mighty, the glorious. That's what will make the people of Jannah, may Allah make us from them, to forget everything they had so far. Just looking at the beautiful face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma rizukna dhalika, Allahumma ameen. May Allah make us from them by his favor and grace. Whoever his mizan, the scales of his bad deed, the second group, will be light. Because of what? Because of his transgressions, because of disobedience and sins. His refuge will be in Hawiyah, hell, Jahannam. The fire will be his final destination and his home. In the Arabic language, it's called what? Um. Um means mother, we know. But Um has different meanings. This is how beautiful the Arabic language is. Um here is called his refuge or his mother because he will be flung, he will be thrown into a hellfire with Um Rasi, with his head, forehead, as we have on other uh, ayat. That's why I call Um Ras, like the, the mother of the head, yeah? kind of the, this the main thing of the head, the top of his head. That's one meaning that he will be thrown with his head, or Um means like Mustaqar, that's his, it will be his place. His refuge, his abode, ma'wahu, jahannam. His abode, it will be jahannam. That's why it's called fa'ummuhu hawiyah. Hawiyah, it's one of the names of jahannam, hellfire. What made you know what is that? What is that hawiyah? What made you know what is that pit? What is that hole, jahannam? This is said, Allah is saying that to let you know and to make us aware of how great is the affair of the day of the judgment. How great is that fire? May Allah protect us. It is a hot blazing fire. A fire of immense heat which consumes, which the, the one that the consumes, it's you and, and, and not meaning that may Allah not must make for part of them, but I mean the, the mankind. The mankind and the stones are the part that the, the hellfire which will eat and consumes. As it came in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, This fire of yours, the fire that we have, that we use, it is one part of out of 70 parts of the hellfire. May Allah Azza protect us from the hellfire. Then the Shaykh gives Surah at takathur Allah Azza says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhaakum al-Takathur, Hatta zurtum al-Maqabid, Kalla sawfa ta'lamun, Thumma kalla sawfa ta'lamun, Kalla law ta'lamun ilma al-Yaqeen, Latarawunna al-Jaheen, the mutual rivalry for piling up of worldly things diverts you. Until you visit the graves. Nay, you shall come to know. Again, nay, you shall come to know. Nay, if you knew with the sure knowledge, verily you shall see the blazing fire, hell. And, and again, you shall see it with certainty of sight. Then on that day, you shall be asked about the delight you indulged in in this world you left. Allah Azza wa called this surah at takathur What's at takathur means? The mutual rivalry for piling up of worldly things diverts you. Al-hakum at takathur And anything that you are eager to amass, to collect from this worldly life. 
التكاثر anything that you compete with one another that keeps you busy and causes you to remain in a constant state of heedlessness in this world of life anything other than remembrance of Allah anything other than the obedience of Allah and his messenger وسلم, is included in takathir even be that even the desire of you of having knowledge just to compete with others not to please Allah just for the sake of knowledge just the desire of you even compiling books even anything of this world like gold silver houses cars anything that you you are competing with others you want to have more of that if, if that's intention from this worldly life it's included in takathir this takathir they collect the desire to compete to collect more of anything from this worldly life other than obedience of allah azawajal al-hakum what allah says it made you divert from the main reason from the main purpose that whatever the, the people amass from wealth trade homes cars children and other than that from the things people compete in amassing it's included here this mutual rivalry diverts you from the purpose of your creation and the purpose is what to worship allah azawajal this is a state of most of the people they are busy with that which was created for them while being distracted from what they are created for which is the worship of allah you understand this point people are busy with whatever was created subjugated to them everything is created for you allah created for you and me we are busy with that forgetting at the purpose of our creation forgetting that which we are created for which is to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah says until you visit graves you will continue to busy yourselves until this enjoyment and amusement that you have until you die and enter in the graves and this is the situation of most of the people and many of the people you will find one of them the other people just running out of breath chasing behind everything this worldly life to compete if i have a, a car i want to have another one i will have another house i want to have another from anything because i want to compete with that one and that one i want to be better than him and better than that so until what until when is that finishes when you enter the grave and subhanallah amazingly allah azawajal did not call it that he called it what visitation he didn't say until you enter the graves until you visit the graves what does it mean because that graves doesn't put an end to your hereafter it's just the beginning that's why it's wrong in like in arabic language they say even here when they say the person when the person passed away they say he moved into his last abode uh, it's not the last it's just starting it's, it's just a transition to find the place either in jannah or either in hellfire may allah Azza protect us because the the grave is the realm between it's the barrier between the world of life and the hereafter it is the gateway of the eternal abode which is jannah or hellfire the deceased will, will enter the grave which is just be only a visitor stay for a while until the day of judgment and he will not remain there is only visiting the graves just we have to understand that it's just only a visitation until you visit the graves and that is the reality of most of us the prophet sallallahu many times he said one day he was reciting surah takat was a hadith sahih muslim so one of the sahaba come and heard the prophet reciting surah takat but the prophet he said Ibn Adam, Yaqul Ibn Adam, Mali, Mali. The son of Adam says, My wealth, my money, my wealth, my wealth. Oh, it's only three types. The, the wealth of yours is only three categories, three types, not anymore. Either you eat it, you consume it, and it's gone. 
You have a, an apple, you eat it, it's done. It's not anymore. You consume it, anything you have. Or you will use this money to buy clothes, you wear it, and it's going to come a time that's going to be torn down. It's going to be old, torn up. Or you give it sadaqah for the sake of Allah, and it will remain for you. Just only three. Pay attention to that. It's only three. There is nothing else. And that is the reality. SubhanAllah. Even if you have billions and millions, you have only one stomach. How much are you going to eat? You have only one life. How much are you you're going to buy? Here, even if you buy three, four, five houses, you cannot live at the same time in, in all of them. You can use spend time here and there, but still, same thing. You cannot wear multiple uh, clothes in the same time. I mean the up or the outside and things. So that's, that, that's what uh, the Prophet explained. And then the other hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that the, the son of Adam, if he had a gold, uh, a valley of gold, he would wish another. He would wish another one. And But at the end, it does not fill his, his greed in his stomach except Turab, only the clay when he, he will die. Allah says, Nay, you shall come to know. This word, Nay, Kalla, is a rebuke of the condition and attribute which is you are amassing, you are busying yourself, and the, that uh, you are collecting everything from this world of life and you are diverting yourself from Allah and hereafter. This is an affirmation of this affair and clarification of the magnitude of the matter. That's different. If you know with a sure knowledge, if you really had knowledge about the end result, if you know what happened, we hear. But really, you had certainty of that knowledge that what's going to be your final destination? He would not be distracted with mutual rivalry, yani competing to amassing this wealth. He would not be diverted the purpose of this creation and the obedience of Allah. Because this word in life is word what? We work and we don't know. And nas people they work but they don't know the hereafter they will work they will not work in the hereafter but they will know they will know man I, I wish I knew this before I heard it I read it but as kind of I didn't have like sure knowledge Allah says Indeed, you shall see the blazing fire. You will be raised to life and you'll be, after the, the, the death, resurrected, and you will see the blazing fire which Allah Azawajal has prepared for the disbelievers. al jahim is the hellfire which it will be brought on the day of judgment. It's a creation. Allah Azawajal has created Jahannam, has created the Jannah, are created, are from the very beginning, are created as it came in a hadith, that are created, are creation. It will be brought like a beast with rains from the, the angels. The angels, Allah Azza says, "Yuta bi Jahannam yawm idin laha sabaoon alf zimam, ma kull zimam in sabaoon alf malakin yajurunah." The hellfire will be brought to the people forward on the day of the judgment with seventy thousand chains and rains. Seventy thousand. Each chain will have seventy thousand angels dragging it. Can you imagine? 70,000 angels for each chain. Multiply by 70,000 chains. This is the number of the malaika. The people that day will see and witness. Jahannam. That, that you will, you're going to see. That you're going to see the, 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 the day of the judgment. Or you're going to see the, the Jahannam. You will surely see the hellfire with your eyes on the day of judgment, the day the people will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that day, they will see, you shall be asked about the de delight. You are going to be asked about the na'im, the bliss that you had in this world of life. What types of a bliss? Somebody said, well, I, I didn't live like, well, I was poor, uh, poor faqir. Allah will ask on the day of judgment for every favor that you, he gave to you in this world of life. Including these favors are wealth, 
children, health, transportation, cars, housing, everything you are going to be questioned about on the day of the judgment. And this is a warning for what is mentioned in the beginning. What is mentioned in the beginning? The na'in, the takafur, that everything you amass from this, what you mentioned, you are busy with that. But don't forget, the end of the ayah is at the end of your life and the resurrection is that you're going to be asked and questioned about everything that you will be collecting and amassing. Everything that you want it, you want in this world life, don't forget, going to be asked. And actually, as it came in the hadith, Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala, he mentioned, they're going to be asked what? For the water that you drink. The health and the water that you drink. drink. And as it came in the other hadith, that did we not make your body healthy and give you cool water to drink? This is going to be said to the mankind. That's hadith sahih. The water that you drink, that you just, you don't take it, you take it for granted nowadays. For that water, you're going to be asked. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Two ni'mah, two blessings. A lot of people are, uh, are, are cheated or the, the deceived in that. And he mentioned what? Your health and your free time. People are uh, that in, 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 in this case are maghbunun as it came in, in the Arabic word, that they are deceived from this. They don't, they are not winners in that. Maghbun is the one who, when you, when you do, a, you, you, you get a deal with somebody, uh, he cheated you basically. And so uh, instead of getting for the, the price, you get it super overpriced in that, for example. So they say that these favors, Allah Azza is reminding of the last of that ayah, beware of being diverted by these favors that Allah has given to you. Be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Show gratitude to him, the one who bestowed those blessings. As long as you show gratitude and you are competing for good deeds, you are competing to please him subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's not included in, in the, the takafa. As long, and who are the best example? The Sahaba radiallahu Remember, and I concluded that inshallah ta'ala, Umar al-Khattab and Abu Bakr siddiq They use what? To compete in what? In good deeds. Until, and those people who compete in good deeds, they don't give up. They see that you are better than him in this one. I'm going to do something else. But at the end of the day, what Umar al-Khattab, when he saw Abu Bakr Siddiq and he gave the whole world, he said, Khalas, I give up. I can't compete with you, Abu Bakr. This was the example of the best of generations, competing in good deeds. They compete in good deeds, not in takathur, to have more. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal, to make us of those who compete for their good deeds to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make us of those who are not diverted by the takathur and amassing of things in this world of life, and are not diverted by the purpose of their creation, the purpose of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illa anta subhanak inna kunna minna dhalimeen sallallahu wa nabiyyu wa muhammad wa sahbihi ajma'in subhanak Allah wa bihamdik ashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu A lot of people sleepy tonight. <laughs>